Hi, so welcome to the next uh, video in this um, set of videos about how to set up a smart home uh, using a KNX background, backbone um, with a, a Raspberry Pi controlling it using Node. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to do something really cool and that is how to connect a um, Texas Instrument sensor tag um, via Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi um, to make measurements and um, specifically um, the, the the use case that I'm doing for my house is that I'm going to set up the sensor tags uh, to measure humidity and then when the humidity in the bathroom um, gets so high it's going to, um, following a shower, it's then going to turn on the towel rails for, for half an hour. So that's the idea. So when I go for a shower, um, uh, the towel rails will come off, come on and, and dry the towels. Um, so that's uh, that's what we plan to do in this in this video. Um, so just what I'll be doing today, uh, I'll give you an introduction uh, to the sensor tags and show you what they're like, and then I'll run you through how to set up uh, this system so that um, we'll, we'll use uh, the sensor tags to, to measure bathroom humidity and then control the septile rails. Now there is quite a lot of um, messing about uh, with this um, to, to get it going but it is quite cool and I'll run you through e each of the steps. Um, so there's quite a little bit of uh, system setup. Um, when I first did this it worked fine um, on um, Debian Wheezy uh, on the Raspberry Pi but with recent updates um, the Bluetooth module seems to not work. There's a whole a host of information about why that doesn't work on the, the various forums and the, the easiest way around it really is to just use them um, the most recent uh, um, Raspbian Jesse uh, distribution and that works just fine um, so uh, we'll need to reinstall um, uh, the operating system and um, and then we'll have to use a slightly amended setup for the um, control of the um, uh, KNX system. We'll have to uh, install KNXD from Michelle's tech, tech blog, but I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, you also need uh, hardware. You'll need a Bluetooth 4 dongle uh, or a Raspberry Pi 3 to do this. Um, and then there's a, a little bit of uh, messing around with Node, installing the various packages and the dependencies and so on. Um, again, I'll run through that. So what are sensor tags? Um, right, well, I'll just uh, sh break out and show you that now. So this is a, um, a Texas Instrument uh, sensor tag. You can see it's a, a very small little uh, package device. It's got this nice rubberized um, protector on it. And we can uh, slide that out. You can see some of the um, uh, the sensors in there um, and uh, some push buttons on either side. Um, so we'll just slide that out and get this going. Um, so you just pop it out of the, the case and when we slide in the, the coin um, battery, you'll see a little LED here uh, start to flash. This will show that the um, uh, the sensor tags up and advertising. So let me just get sure, make sure I get this the right way around. So we just slide the um, this battery in there, and you can see that we're we've got a, um, we're getting this green light, which is showing that it's advertising. So I'll just connect to that. There's a, a free app on the um, on the App Store. Um, for, for connecting to sensor tags. So I've just booted up the uh, um, the uh, app here. Let me just zoom in on my phone and we'll connect to our sensor tag here. So you can see that we're starting to receive information. So I'm getting uh, temperature readings, uh, infrared temperature from the tag, uh, humidity, uh, barometer, and then movement. And you can see it's, we're not not moving uh, at, at the moment. But I will um, so let me get this going. So we'll have a look at the movement, and we can see the accelerometer. So you can see as I move this around, we can as I shape re receiving data from that. Um, you can see we've got a light sensor here. If I cover over the tag, we'll see that drop away. It's pretty responsive, and so on. Um, so there's a whole series of uh, yeah, uh, this sort of sensors and so on that you can uh, you can tap into, and um, 
yeah, it's a fantastic little uh, little device. You can extend its functionality even further by uh, uh, getting hold of a, a battery a cable, um, a battery pack like that, which you can simply solder onto the, the terminals here. Um, and this will give you a much bigger, uh, larger battery just using a couple of AA um, batteries in there. It will give you much longer uh, life span uh, for your sensors. So I had this set up making humidity readings um, every every minute and uh, took that away in a HVAC for I think it was there for four or five months and it was still working fine afterwards uh, after after that period of time and the, I, I wasn't sure how, how much the battery had gone down but it was working fine. Um, you will need uh, another bit of kit from uh, Texas Instruments. This is the uh, uh, the debugger um, uh, dev pack and effectively this is used for uh, um, uh, programming the, uh, the the center tags, um, you, you effectively just slide your tag on on there like that, and it makes a connection, and then you can download um, uh, uh, various software to the um, uh, to the tag. Um, one thing to, that's very handy to do is to change the advertising frequently frequencies or well, the advertising the duration of time that the tag will advertise. Um, when you get the tag out of the box, it'll only advertise for um, a, a minute or two uh, before it goes to sleep. Um, and That's not very convenient if you've tucked it away somewhere it's hard to get at. You want it to continuously advertise itself so that you can connect to it as you're, uh, as you're working on the, on the, um, the software on, on, say, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that's the, um, uh, the center tag. Um, really, really interesting pieces of kit. They are, um, it, it is meant for folk to learn about uh, the whole Bluetooth stack. So it is, it is a little bit challenging to get into initially. You have to code everything up in C, um, uh, which can be a challenge if you're not familiar with that. Um, but a lot of the changes uh, that are required uh, on the on the the tag are, are, are pretty uh, pretty minor and can be. Um, uh, um, done pretty easily, and we can kind of hack it for our, you know, to make it as a as a as a very small sensor that we can kind of tuck away um, and uh, and and use um, to add value to our KNX system. You will also need um, a little Bluetooth um, dongle as well, so it needs to be Bluetooth four um, USB dongle uh, like this. Um, Unless you're using a Raspberry Pi 3, where I think it's uh, inbuilt. I'm using Raspberry Pi 2, so I needed to get a little dongle um, to connect to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned before, um, when the when I take a shower, I want the towel rails to come on. Unfortunately, there was no um, humidity sensor in the bathroom, um, which was a bit of an oversight on my part. So um, I decided to use a sensor tag and stuff this into the um, ventilation system and then when that uh, records a high level of humidity it's going to communicate that over uh, the Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi is going to effectively switch on the, the actuator which will turn on the, the towel rails. Um, so how do we do this? Okay so um, as I mentioned before you have to start with the latest uh, Raspberry uh, release. Um, I use the Jesse Lite and go through the setup guide. It's pretty easy to do. If you've done it once you should be able to do it uh, fine again, but you'll have to do you'll have to install that operating system, um, update some of the um, uh, the um, uh, the settings so that you can use S SSH, um, and also always remember to set up your your local time as well. Um, and then um, then I used uh, then I set up the a static address on the on the Raspberry Pi um, using the guide. Uh, for Jesse by Mod My Pi Guide, and that's the link down there. Um, if you put Mod My Pi, you know, static IP, Jesse, um, you'll get that guide. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, then I installed KNXD from Mikkel's tech blog. Um, here's the link. Um, slightly different setup um, to, the, um, uh, to the one that I showed you before, but very, very similar. And then again, you'll have to install Node from Adafruit, which doesn't take too long. I'll show you that. And then Whoops, um, and then install uh, npm, uh, sorry, e e eibd um, to control the KNXD um, and sort of communicate through Node um, there. 
And then we'll have to install some of the Bluetooth dependencies and check whether that's working. And then install the N NPN dependencies for the sensor tag package, which we'll be using to communicate um, to um, uh, the sensor tag. And then we'll have to add in our app.js to our sensor tag files and, and so on, and, and also add in the sensor tag JS. So this is the, the eventual file structure under your home slash pi, there'll be knx, and then within that there'll be the app.js file and a folder called node modules and then within that um, you'll have sensor tag and one or two others as well at the EIBD um, which is essential for controlling the um, uh, KNX system and then slash utilities and we'll have the, the sensor tag file in there. Right so if I run through this um, I'll assume that you've got a Raspberry in um, and the Jesse uh, Lite uh, version set up and running and that you've adjusted everything. Um, so the first thing is to use the ModMyPi guide um, to uh, so this is the guide, um, really excellent guide on how to set up your static address. Um, very straightforward. Um, it doesn't take too long at all, really, to do that. Um, so that's uh, that that's pretty straightforward. Um, it'll take about um, I don't know about five ten minutes to do that. And then you've got the uh, installing the. Um, uh, KNXD, and you can see this is a, a fairly recent um, uh, post by Mikhail. So um, I guess he's uh, you know bringing things up to date for the Raspberry Pi three and uh, and so on. So um, so again, this is pretty straightforward. You have to set a static IP, but we've done that with the Mod My IP dry, um, Mod My IP um, guide here, and you don't have to do all of this. Uh, business here, so we're going to get into the meat of it um, here. So um, yeah, we're going to basically um, w get this file and then change the uh, 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 change mod uh, to allow it to to run, and then we're going to run it. And that's going to install all the tools, and then we're going to uh, check that they're actually installed. So if I just bring up my uh, my Pi. Uh, See, I've had this running and I know it's running just fine now. So we'll have a look in ls l slash user slash bin. And you can see we've got the knxd there, knxd find USB, knx tool, and so on down there. And then we'll, um, so that's what you're looking for to make sure those files are there. And then we'll do the next one. I could just copy and paste this. I don't know why. Not. Let me just do that. All right. Forget the copy and paste. The terminal doesn't work properly. There we go. So we've got the. Um, and we're getting that up right. That's fine. Um, and yeah, I can run. I can run Kenix tool. Bus. There we are, we're seeing um, uh, data on the bus uh, coming in. So that's all set up fine. Okay, um, then we're going to install a node uh, using uh, the Adafruit guide. Very, very simple, takes a very short period of time. And then when you've done that, again, you need to set up the folder structure as we've discussed, and then npm install eibd and, and get, that, get that installed. And then, so that finally brings us back where are we now? Okay, yeah. So now we have to. Um, uh, we're, we're we've got to sort of set things up to run um, uh, Bluetooth. So um, that requires some additional packages to be installed. Um, so I think where are we here? Um, yeah. So uh, we have a look at. It. So you have to install these prerequisites. Um, so. 
we have basically for on Unix, um, you just have to run npm install g no git, and that will be fine. Um, I think there is a. Uh, I think the first time you run this, it does throw a sudo error, um, but there's a, a handy guide to to sort that out. And then finally, the um, uh, you have to yeah. So for um, Raspbian, these are the packages that you have to install to get um, a Noble running. So sudo app get install Bluetooth Blues, um, and these are installing the the sort of packages uh, that work in the background to to drive the uh, uh, the Bluetooth um, dongle. Um, and then you obviously npm install Noble as well. So uh, yeah, um, all very straightforward really um, when that's going. And then um, the uh, the next thing to to do is just check that your um, that Bluetooth is actually running. Um, so I think you can use th things like um, so, uh, oh yeah, it's a scan isn't it? So that's scanning now. Let's see if it picks anything up. Probably won't pick up anything. <laughs> Let me look. Oh, there we go. We've got a couple of things pick, being picked up. So it shows that the Bluetooth is is working fine. Um, so um, so you want to be seeing that when you run a, a, a scan, you want to be able to see that the the Bluetooth is actually picking things up. Um, if not, then you you'll have you know some uh, issues to um, uh, um, to to you know to to problem solve to to get um, uh, to resolve that. Um, there are usually pretty good guides on on how to get that going, but if you're using most of the issues that I came in, um, came across were all related to my use of uh, an old Wheezy um, distribution, which um, didn't work very well. So then you have to npm install um, center tag, um, as we've just looked at, and so you've got the um, prerequisites and then the install, um, and. Uh, then you should be ready to go. So I'll, I'll just run you through the code. Um, so in the app JS, um, I've actually um, uh, commented out the the require KNX EIBD um, just for the, this stage. Um, but I, you can see I require the uh, uh, the center tag mod module in utilities, and then this is the file here. Now a lot of this is just um, a, a bit of a bit hashed together really um, from a number of different examples I saw on the. Uh, uh, on the internet um, to get things to get things working, but essentially this will connect to a number of different center tags, and um, and then start taking humidity uh, settings uh, readings from them, uh, and then we'll console log that. So if I go back here, and if I run my uh, node app.js, uh, it's discovered um, the first tent center tag. It's now connected to that. And now we can see we've got the humidity um, uh, readings coming through. And if I stop, slot the battery in the second center tag, um, it's now discovered that and is taking readings from both of them. I'm now just going to, I've cooked one in my hand and I'm going to blow on it. So you can see the, um, the two sets of readings, one's jumped up to sort of 90% here and the other one remains um, about 60%. Um, so it shows that humidity has been read from both um, from both of those. If I push this up even higher up to 99, it'll turn the towel rails on for 30 seconds. There we go. So it fires up the towel rails. I'll now let that calm down. I think I put I think I put the time on time out on this for the time for the example at just sort of 30 seconds. But my intention is to push that out to about um, 30 minutes. So with the firing up towel rails will win there, and there it goes turning off the towel rails, and it's just monitoring. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you could use um, this uh, kind of backbone to connect a whole host of different um, uh, um, uh, sensors to the Raspberry Pi, and and just you know the you know sensors in areas where you wouldn't necessarily um, be able to. Um, uh, I'll just pull this back off. Pull up the PowerPoint. Um, so you've got the, the the links in there, and you can see that. So, um, so yeah, you can see that sensor tags offer a great deal of um, you know a huge possibility really um, for sort of integrating uh, things. 
um, into a KNX system so you can hide sensors around the place um, where you don't have wired connections and just use those. Um, it, this should, if I disconnect one of the, uh, the sensor tags, you'll see it disconnect and it started looking for them. Uh, so if I put the battery back into that, it's discovered it again and off it goes. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, so yeah, so you could you don't necessarily have to use the humidity sensor. You could use the temperature sensor or the one of the other sensors that are in, included in the sensor tag. Um, so anyway, I hope this inspires you and uh, um, you've enjoyed it. I know it's a bit of a faff to set this one up um, because of the reinstall for for Jesse, but it doesn't take too long. I would anticipate that the whole process should take you no more than an hour and a half or so. Oh, one of the things too um, that you may find uh, a little frustrating, I should just mention this actually, with the sensor tags are that um, when you get them out of the, um, uh, out of the package um, from, the, from the manufacturers um, and you put the coin cell in, I think they only advertise themselves for about um, uh, two minutes or a minute or so before they then power down to save battery. Um, so uh, that can be really, really annoying, particularly if you've stuck them away. Um, so it's well worthwhile, um, uh, uh, if you can, reprogramming the, uh, the sensor tags to advertise indefinitely. It's a fairly simple tweak in terms of code. Um, I think you, if you, uh, I'll take a few screenshots and include them at this stage, but um, you have to use the uh, the free uh, Code Composer Studio and a debug um, board um, for the um, for the sensor tags uh, to reprogram them. And um, effectively, all you do is you change um, the flag. And I can't remember which one it is. Let me just look down through this. Um, you change the um, line 118, uh, which, well, 117 says general discoverable mode advertises indefinitely, and you, um, the, 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 the line underneath that, um, line 118, um, which is um, hash define default underscore discoverable underscore mode, you set that to gap underscore add type underscore flags underscore general. Okay, and that will, that will, um, keep the sensor tags advertising forever. Now that does mean that you will run down the batteries, um, but um, you know if you've took them away, um, then you, um, uh, you don't really want to be doing that. And I'll, I'll just show you once again, I can turn, turn this off, and I'll turn one of them back on again. It's just covered it and off it goes again. Pretty cool. Right guys, well, um, thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed it. Any comments or questions, please just put them in the in the comment section. Um, anything you'd like me to look at in future, really happy to do that. And yeah, thanks for listening and I'll see you soon.